Hello and welcome to another CBC review. This, uh, this is for Doctor Who again. This is episode five of the current series, and uh, this is Time Heist. Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just to get started, it's Tom and Tom again. Uh, so what did you think of the episode overall? Um, I enjoyed it. It had a very... Okay, for anyone who hasn't seen the show, um, there's a show here in the UK called um, Hustle. The very start of this had a very Hustle vibe to it. And the way it was edited as well. Yeah. With them going into the bank and everything like that. Even with the slow motion, like, yeah, walking cool down the middle yeah. of the bank, like, yeah, the heist is on. Yeah. Like, it was very, very Hustle. Yeah, oh yeah. It, it had that very sort of mortality towards it, and it worked it worked well. And it, and surprisingly, the secondary characters probably have been the most interesting secondary characters we have this season so far. Yeah, they were they were really cool. And I think what he's doing though is uh, Moffat's maybe setting up uh, another army, like in A Good Man Goes to War. He's getting people that you can see coming back, maybe. Yeah. Like one off episodes, oh. uh, maybe like a new Paternoster gang somewhere oh. down the line. Oh yeah, definitely. No, I think that could be interesting. Yeah, they were very well well actors. They're very very good actors, well, especially the cyborg person. He was really good. Yeah, I liked him a lot. Yeah. Oh. Actually, I don't think there was a weak actor in this episode. No. I thought it was thoroughly enjoyable. Also, even the female who ran the bank. Um, Kiki Horse played. Yeah. Them. I can't remember the name. Madame Castavarus. Yeah, she. Um, she or something. Yeah, she did the. If I'm correct on this, um, she was also in Ashes to Ashes, one of which one of my yes, favourite sure. shows, and also she did the voice of Lara Croft for many years. Yeah. For the Tomb Raider games. Yeah, no, she's a she's a great actress. Uh, I've seen her in a few things now, and like she pops up every now and then in different shows now, which is uh, pretty good because sometimes I'm, I'm expecting it, sometimes not. Which is she's one of those actresses that's doing a lot of different television at the moment. Yeah, uh, she always seems to be picking the good shows as yeah. well. She's very talented. Yeah, very very talented. She always seems to get these pretty pretty cool roles. I mean, the old woman makeup, like skipping spoilers straight to the end, the old woman makeup. And she had that little scene. I thought was really cool. Yeah, she played it off well. Yeah, and the makeup looked awesome. But she, yeah. you could like, she was proper playing yeah. the age as well. Oh, but speaking of impressive makeups and stuff like that, that alien. Considering they chose to go with a prosthetic thing, like a actual makeup thing, like with a robot thing, rather than visual effects, like without CGI, I thought that was a really impressive decision because it looks so much better than it would have done with CGI. Oh yeah, definitely. And it looks, it do, it, it looked like it's there and real and everything. Like it just was so so good but again the plot for this is very it's very straightforward plot basically getting the point a to point b but with a little bit of a twist at the end of with it a, with a timey-wimey twist yeah timey wimey <laughs> very, very doctor who-ish yeah well, modern doctor who-ish twist to it that's the whole thing and yeah. uh, I, I really loved it at the moment when the doctor was like uh, this is being planned from the future i was just like yeah that's that's how you add a doctor who twist yeah <laughs> I, I think the other thing that was interesting about it as well is i don't know it, I, I just thought the chemistry between the four actors were done very very well and just came off i don't know it just came off really well it's just also we actually got some backstory about the two other characters as well which yeah. um this gave me which i was like you're really putting a lot of good emphasis. You, you're making me care about these two people who I've only just met, which I like a lot. It's always great when Doctor Who manages to make you care about just the one-off character. And I think it was done to with less success in the, uh, what was it called, Into the Dalek. Yeah. With those characters. they I, I'm nowhere near as attached to those characters. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Especially that one woman. I still remember the line she says, but I don't remember her name. And oh. the line was... Uh, don't forget me or something like that or make them remember me mm-hmm. and I don't remember her name I think the <laughs> one thing I did like as well was that it was very unexpected like you had no idea what was going on everything kicks off and everything like that and it's just all of them in a room and everything like that and you had no idea who who, who they're working for this guy called the architect and everything like that. it turns out to be the doctor but yeah I saw that coming from a mile off though yeah it, it just had a very good start to it and everything like that you just you were on this journey and things like that, and it basically was about them breaking into this place and then finding out who who's this guy they're working for and everything like that. And it's just slowly, slowly giving you hints, hints and stuff like that towards the end, and trying to work out that it's, it's the Doctor himself who's hiring him, himself, and a bunch of other people who go yeah. along for the ride. And the way that he works out that it's himself is because he works out that he hates, hates the architects, him. and he because yeah. he hates himself. So yeah, I they say, wait, you hate your own clone? I hate the architect. <laughs> oh, it just works out from that. Yeah, like that's all he needed. 
But that's the same way that he worked out who the Dream Lord was as well in that episode. Yeah. Um, he works out that the Dream Lord hates him more than anyone else alive, and he says there's only one man who hates me as much as you do. And that's how he works out that actually pretty cool. Like, I like that Doctor Who has a character that is so openly self-hating. Also, the bit when the um, alien was going around and um, trying to find them when when the whole when they're trying to get the vault open, I thought that was a very good sequence. Yeah, the teller. Yeah, the teller when it's going around trying to find them and everything. Like that. I thought that was such a good sequence. And when the um, half human half cyborg person like gives himself up and everything like that to, to save Clara's yeah. um, did you know TV did you see all the easter eggs that were coming up on that screen with flashing up with, with all the different people yeah that was all this, uh, this Levine there so um, um, John Hart um, from um, Torchwood was there as well yeah which made me laugh quite a bit and it was even a comic book character that was there that oh I didn't up. see that yeah, yeah, it was just around about the time the Savino John Hurt character came. I was literally like, it's like just like a little comics um, thing. I can't remember his name, but he's quite well known for fighting, um, fighting the Daleks in like a comic book and everything like in like a Doctor Who comic that was back in the eighties, I believe, eighties. Huh. And it just came up, and I rec- only recognised him because it was it was brought up on the Doctor Who um, Facebook group. Back a while ago, and I was like, ah, that's put, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was an interesting one. It was like you mentioned, like Savine, um, all the different, all the different criminals in the whole universe that were in that, that have ever been in the Doctor Who canon, yeah. have popped up on that menu, and I thought that was such a nice little reference to do. Yeah, it really shows that this is, with all its changes, is still the same show, and I like when they have a little bit of continuity, especially yeah. with the Russell T. Davis era stuff as well. Yeah. Because a lot of people have accused it of trying to abandon that completely, and yeah. uh, little scenes like this just show, no, it's all still there, you just uh, just trust us. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, again, I thought the writer did a good job in everything like that, because, yeah. again, um, the person who wrote this was the person who did Journey to the Center of the TARDIS, why I do like that, I just didn't like the payoff at the ending of that episode. Yeah. but uh, I have to agree. I, I like that episode a lot, but the ending is the weakest point. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can, I can see that, definitely. <laughs> but I just thought overall this had a very good feel. It had a very good production value. It had a lot of clever ideas. In it, and it just was just a solid, fun episode of Doctor Who. Definitely. It, it was enjoyable. I wouldn't say it's the best, but I would say that it came together well and it was such a fun episode yeah and uh although people are inevitably going to obviously compare it to last week there are there are still a few people on my facebook that claim that last week's was an abomination yeah oh yeah i, I had that as well i had people saying to me said the last one really really because uh, i said this to you when we were doing this record when we were doing a recording people were going to be very very negative towards last week's episode yeah. i saw that happen and, and it did i loved it Yes. I still think that last week's was one of the best episodes we've had in a oh, long time. Oh yeah, I would say so too. But I would just say that it's um, it, it it's, it's definitely it's a divisive episode. Yeah, it's it's one of those episodes you either love it or going to hate it because it really does play with the origins of the Doctor and also retells some new stuff about the Doctor's origins, which some people don't like Moffat doing, but then some people don't mind it. It's very fifty fifty with when it comes to yeah. Moffat's episodes. Yeah. Uh, I I'm one of the good, one, I'm in the camp that I like it, but yeah. that's just and, me. <laughs> yeah. And you know me with Moffat, I'm very mixed on him. I I'm more swayed towards not liking um liking his writing, but I it, when I will admit when he does a good job, he does a good job. Certain certain episodes he's yeah. done have just been classics, yeah. like the girl in the fireplace. Yeah. It's it's funny because a lot of people keep saying to me and said, "Oh, the, the rating figures been going down and stuff like that." And I'm saying, "Well, it's still like the, it's the second most viewed show of the night behind X Factor in the UK at the moment." Yeah, it's it's doing bloody well. <laughs> yeah, you got anything else that you notice in this episode? Do you, you, I think that's pretty much it myself, actually. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, this has been a pretty short review, but yeah. it wasn't an episode that there was a hell of a lot going on. To bear. Yeah, I, uh, I, <laughs> I, I think the one thing we didn't have to touch upon, but the whole reason why this time heist happened in the first place, because owner of the bank, um, this galactic bank and everything like that, when she becomes an old lady, she regrets, you know, she regrets yeah. what she did in the past, and she she regrets what she did to this alien, the um, tower, and yeah. basically wanted to free him and his wife and everything, like that. and that's why the doctor d- d- agrees to do this whole thing in the first place, which I thought was a very nice touch because it's something that the doctor would do, would save a species from extinction or save someone, you know? Yeah, 
it's not professional detachment, as that character yeah. said in the thing. Uh, the Doctor is compassionate, and it just shows that as much as he's changed, she's still the Doctor. Yeah. But yeah, yeah the, that was a really nice thing. Yeah, the tower had a very creepy effect though when it melted everyone's brains. That was very dark. That was yeah. pretty cool. I liked that. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I thought that was done very, very well for considering about it. But yeah, like I said, solid episode. Probably not the best one so far, but a very enjoyable one nonetheless. Yeah, it was never going to be the best episode. No. But no, it was fantastic yeah. anyway. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, with all its problems, it still had some really like solid stuff in it as well so uh what would you give it oh now that's the tough question of the day <laughs> seven seven out of ten you give it seven out of ten um i'd give it a, um i think i'd give it the same as i did um into the dalek uh 8.5 i enjoyed this a lot more than i think you did but yeah, again i think i i enjoy high stuff more than you I, I really like Hustle, and I don't think it was as good as Hustle. No, no. That's the only reason I give it a lower score. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. But, yeah, again, I do like that they do portray that sort of element from that show, you know? Yeah. That's just me. No, I liked they did it. It was just I didn't yeah. think they did it as well as they could have. Okay, fair enough. I think they should have brought in one of the directors of Hustle's, like, it, like which uh, I don't know if the director has done Hustle before, but they need to find one of the ones who did yeah. one of the well, amazing episodes They need. Hustle. They need to get the head guy then, and um, the guys also did um, Life on Mars as well. Yeah, they they need to get that guy in if they're going to do another heist episode because that's how you do it on television with the BBC <laughs> on budget. Oh yeah, like, <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Overall, good episode. <laughs> yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm I'm not saying it's bad by any means. I just don't think it was the best it could have been. So yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for listening and for watching. Hey guys, Joel here reminding you that this video was made possible thanks to our many great patrons. If you want to become a patron and get exclusive comic book cast content, then click the Patreon link below and see how you can help us bring you the content you've come to love. Every little bit helps, and thanks for listening.